In this video, I'll show you how to create token actions, which will allow you to perform attacks and cast spells at the click of a button, and I'll also show you how to create a special token that can be used to track how many spell slots a character has used. Alright, let's get started. So, the first thing we're going to show you is how to create token actions. Now, normally, when you perform an attack, you open up your character sheet, you click on the relevant action, and the attack or the spell is put into chat. Great. But if you have multiple characters that you're running, you know, especially if you're GMing, I've got multiple monsters on the board here, I'm going to need to be bouncing between three different character sheets, each one of them doing something different, you know, Ray of Frost from my Drow Mage, and then over to my Umber Hulk, who's going to do a multi-attack, which means we get uh, two attacks with the claws, and then one with the mandibles, and then I'm going to need to bounce back and forth as I go along here. It would just be a lot cleaner if I could just click on a token, have all of its attacks displayed up here, and then click on the one that's pertinent. So have my Hobgoblin take a shot with his longbow. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, I'm going to open up the Umber Hulk's character sheet here. And the first thing I'm going to do is click the claw attack. All right, and you can see claw gets put here into the chat. Now what I'm going to do is put my cursor down here in the chat panel and press up on my keyboard. And this, what you see here, is all of the code that gets called when you click on the action here. So I'm just going to select all this, and I'm going to copy it. And now I'm going to go to this Attributes and Abilities section here. I'm going to click Add. I'm going to say Edit. We'll call this new ability Claw, and then we're just going to paste in the code for the Claw. All this stuff, right? And now we're going to say Show as Token Action. All right, now when I click onto the token again, you can see right over here we've got the Claw. And I click on it, and we get more Claws. Great. So now we're going to repeat that for our other attack for the mandibles. All right, so there are mandibles. I'm going to clear this whole thing out, press up again, do the exact same thing. I'm just going to select everything in here, copy it, back to attributes and abilities, add, call this one mandibles, paste, check mark, token action. All right, click on the token again, and now we've got mandibles. Okay. Now, in the Umber Hulk's character sheet, though, we see that we have a multi attack. The Umber Hulk makes three attacks two with its claws and one with its mandibles. So, what I want to do now is create one more of these. I'm going to call this one multi attack. And I need to call these other abilities that we've already created. I'm going to call the claw one twice and the mandible one once. So to do that, we're going to type in percent, open curly brace, selected, a pipe, and then claw. Close the curly brace. I'm going to copy and paste that so I have two of them. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to do it for mandibles. All right, so claw, claw, mandibles, which is exactly what our multi-attack should be here. Two claws, one mandibles. All right. And now we can test this. I'll, I'll clear the chat logs. This is a little easier to see. Click on this button right here to test it. And there we go. Claw, claw, mandibles. One. All right. Now we'll show that as a token action. And then, again, click off and on the token again. There we go. There's multi-attack. Boom. So now... Really easy for me to just move my Umber Hulk over towards the PC wizard, perform a multi-attack, and then take it from there. Now this same concept applies to spells as well. So I'm going to open up my Drow Mage's character sheet here. And on the character sheet, you can see I've got Ray of Frost, I've got some attacks, I could make token actions for those too, but then I can also do this for spells like Witch Bolt or for Magic Missile. So let's let's do one for, for Magic Missile here. I'm just going to click on Magic Missile. I'll do the same trick, press up on the keyboard, get this, and then put it as an ability. I will call this you know, Magic Missile, 
and then we'll paste that in. But the thing about this is Magic Missile is a spell, and my Drow has limited spell slots. You know, if I look at my uh, character sheet here, he's got one level one spell remaining, uh, one level two, and then two level threes. Well, it's all well and good now that I can click Magic Missile here, but I have no way to track how many spells he has remaining unless I go back into the character sheet. And we're trying to avoid going into the character sheet. So what I've done is I've created this little token right here. And this token is linked to the character sheet. You can see there's one level one spell, one level two spell, and two level three spells. And these are connected so that if I adjust these, if I drop the level one spells by one, you see that it updates the character sheet as well. And same thing if I were to update it in the character sheet, like if I increase this to three level three spells, you can see that it's updated. So these are connected and this way, as your you know, character casts spells, you can just adjust the number of spells they have remaining here and then that is reflected in the character sheet. So let me show you how we actually make these. So this token that I've created is covering spell levels one through three. My drow can also cast level four and five spells, so I'll create a second token tracking those spells. And the way we do that is we just go into the uh, artwork tab, grab yourself a journal token or a spellbook token, which is what I'm doing here, and you want to drop it onto the GM layer. And I'm going to double click on the token here. I'm going to say that this represents my drow mage. For name, I'll call this uh, drow spells four through six for levels four through six. And then the bars go bar three, bar one, and bar two. So I want bar three here to represent the number of level four spells he has remaining. So I'm gonna go here to bar three and I'm gonna set this to what's called LVL four slots expended. And you can see there's three. And so if I look at my character sheet here, yes, I have three level four spells. Awesome. I'm going to do for bar one, that's going to be my level five spells. So that'll be LVL five slots expended. And then I don't have any level six spells. So for max there, I've got three level fours and two level fives. So I'll fill that in. Three and two. And now I'll click Save Changes. And now whenever I want to cast a level 4 or 5 spell, all I need to do is pop over to the GM layer. And you can do that with the Advanced Keyboard Shortcuts. Uh, if you've enabled Advanced Keyboard Shortcuts, which is right uh, here in the settings, uh, the letter K will switch you to the GM layer. The letter O will switch you back to the token layer. So you can come onto the token layer, click Magic Missile, press K, and then say, okay, I just cast that magic missile at level four, so I'm gonna drop it down by one, and now I have two level four spells remaining, and that is being tracked here in the character sheet as well because these are in fact linked. So, that's everything for today. I hope you found these techniques helpful. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.